Good morning, Panther fans. This is Craig Drilling, Director of Athletics, with your weekly Brandon Hall Sports Report. The action this week kicks into high gear as the varsity tennis teams and the varsity soccer team returns to game action. At filming time on Tuesday morning, the Panthers varsity tennis teams are preparing for a trip to the Country Club of Roswell to take on Mount Pisgah. And then on Thursday, they travel to Wills Park to take on Fulton Science Academy. Go Panthers and Lady Panthers. The varsity soccer team hosts Fellowship Christian at 4.30 on Friday afternoon. We are looking forward to watching the Panthers lighting up the nets again this year. That is your weekly sports report. Go Panthers! In November 1999, Contrail Jackson was only 18 days past his 14th birthday when he made the fateful decision to go with two other teens to a video store. But before that moment, Contrail's life had been surrounded by violence and struggle. I was raised in the government house and projects. My earliest memory is when I was four years old and watched the police arrest my mother for shooting a neighbor. A few months later, she held me and my sister on Christmas Eve before being sent to prison. I had no relationship with my father, so I went to live with my grandmother. Once my mom returned home, I saw her boyfriend physically and mentally abuse her. Drug abuse surrounded us. When I was 11 years old, my older brother went to prison for shooting a man. On November 18, 1999, Contrell and two other teens were walking through the housing projects in Blytheville, Arkansas, when someone suggested robbing a local video store. When they got to the store, Contrell decided to stay outside while the other two teens went in. After a few minutes, Contrell became concerned about what was going on inside. A few minutes after he entered the store, he saw one of the other teens shoot and kill the store clerk. The three then fled without taking any money. At the my risk, the court overruled my request to have my case transferred to the juvenile division. So I was tried as an adult, convicted of capital murder and aggravated robbery, and sentenced to a mandatory term of life without parole. In 2012, the United States Supreme Court issued a historic ruling in Contrell's case and a companion case. They found that it is unconstitutional to impose a mandatory life without parole sentence on any child under the age of 18. As a result of that decision, the Arkansas Supreme Court ruled that Contrell had to have a new sentencing hearing. On February 21st, 2017, I was released from prison. To help me adjust after my release, I agreed to spend time in Montgomery, Alabama, participating in PrEP, EJI's reentry program. I want to be a professional actor, writer, and inspiration to youth who come from backgrounds similar to mine. When I was in prison, I learned that in order to survive as the youngest person, I needed to understand body language, emotion, voices. I had to learn to read people in order to figure out who posed the threat long before a threat became obvious. I also had to learn how to project confidence no matter what and influence people around me with communication, especially knowing how to tell a good story or a joke. I think acting and creative writing allowed me to use all those skills I developed over the years to share and explore my own story while also experiencing what it's like to live inside of another person's story. My work is clear. The eyes facing me are clear. The potentials I have to make an impact is clear. But what's also clear is I can't do it alone, and neither can EJI. I need you to commit to meet someone with a story like mine and listening. The destructive narratives and ideas about young people cannot be replaced until you have other stories to replace them with. Volunteer with groups that'll lead you to our stories. Once you find your way to our stories, share them with people who vote, with elected officials, with judges, with reporters, with the whole world. I'm so excited to be sitting next to this young man who is living proof of what justice, what redemption are all about. I met him when he'd been condemned to die in prison, 
People didn't believe his life had meaning. They thought his life was beyond redemption. They didn't think he had purpose. But he's come out of prison and he's proved all of that wrong. He's doing amazing things. He's representing the hope that we ought to have for everybody. There are thousands of people coming out of jails and prisons every year who need our support, who need our commitment, who need our compassion, who need our belief in what human beings can do if we give them the right chance. There's a great opportunity for you to join us in this effort. We can end mass incarceration. We can stop excessive punishment. We can create real change in our society and improve public safety. But we can't do it if we stay silent about these issues. If we don't give chances to people like Contrell and thousands of others who've come out of jails and prisons, join us in this effort. Help us change the world. Help us end mass incarceration and excessive punishment. Help us restore life and hope in so many communities that have been devastated by unfair and just punishment. and I'm on the yearbook staff this year. And so during your advisory, we're gonna, your advisors are gonna have you um, write down on two separate index cards, you're gonna write down one, your life goals, and two, your 2021 New Year's resolution. And this is for a page in the yearbook. Don't worry, it will remain anonymous. 